Well, hello out there, YouTube, and welcome, welcome back to this big summer series we're in on the questions of Jesus. And I'm going to start a little different today. I always ask questions and stuff. Today might be a little sillier start, but I think you'll catch on to where I'm headed. I wanted to ask you, and I think by now we've all at least heard of this. We've seen movies about this. It pops up in commercials around us. But have you ever heard of artificial intelligence? Like, I don't think any of us haven't heard of it at this point. It's on commercials, it's advertised all the time. We're seeing it popping up on our phones and our computers. And I gotta tell you, every time I hear that concept of AI and artificial intelligence, I get a little nervous because you know I come from that generation before the internet. I know to the kids that sounds crazy, but uh, you know, in the 80s, we watched a lot of movies about artificial intelligence and it seemed to me that artificial intelligence was the thing that was opening the door to the robots taking over the world. So I'm a little nervous about this stuff. I get, you know, I get a little nervy every time I see these commercials. And I seem to be trying to remind people of those movies from the 80s and the dangers of AI and what it can be. And, you know, I'm mostly joking about that. But, hey, I am keeping my eye on it for everybody. We need to remember this whole artificial intelligence thing. And, but it is wild how technology continues to grow, right? I mean, it's just incredible at this point. But, but for all our advancements, it seems to me that we can often look at Scripture and, and we can actually see Jesus pointing out a version of artificial intelligence quite often in our Scriptures. And, and that's really what we're going to get into today. And Now, this version of artificial intelligence, it has absolutely nothing to do with computers. It has nothing to do with the Internet thinking for us and guiding us through our lives. But it has everything to do with those who had a lot of knowledge about the scriptures and zero ability to live them out. Uh, you know, we, we could probably go to Solomon, right, and look at wisdom and what it is and what it's not. We did that all last summer, understanding that there's one thing to have knowledge. It's a whole other thing to live it out. You know, what's interesting to me is we see these people in Scripture that Jesus is in a lot of confrontations with, and that's what it comes down to. We have this concept of Scripture with no ability to live it out or no desire to take that knowledge of Scripture and apply it to our lives. Or, or maybe worse, we're using Scriptures in ways that we just shouldn't. And I think that's the true definition of artificial intelligence, if you ask me, or this fake intelligence that, that, that we see in Scripture. It, it would be obtaining knowledge about God and the Scriptures and then learning how to live our left by, that, that all show us how to live our left, best lives possible and never applying any of it to our lives. Stays up here, never comes in here, never comes out in our lives. Or worse, we learn all this knowledge about God but we're never going to obey what he commands or what he's teaching us in Scripture. I think that's a heartbreaking reality that Jesus faced in his time on earth. And, and i got to tell you, being around church my entire life, we still see that a lot today. So today we're going to continue this big summer Bible study we're in called The Simple Questions of Jesus. And, and I think it's been a lot of fun. You're already learning. It really isn't all that simple. Simple doesn't mean easy. I think it's very important and it's been very challenging at times to really personalize these questions from Jesus. And one of the things I wanted to say on the front end today is Jesus asked a lot of questions. We know that by now. But he asked a lot of questions to all different kinds of people in all different kinds of circumstances. Sometimes he's talking to his friends and he's asking questions of his disciples and those who want to follow him. And sometimes he's asking questions of those who really need something from him and want deep healing from him. And sometimes it's just very casual conversations as they're walking along a road or eating dinner together. And sometimes it's in the middle of really intense confrontations with people who want to kill him. But all of these questions, regardless of who he's asking them to, regardless of the circumstances that they, can come up, they, they come up in, can really help us personally when we stop, slow down, and lean into them and take time to answer those questions for ourselves. You know, that's why I like to view this Bible study this summer more, as more of an exercise than an actual Bible study. I'm using that language on purpose, and I think it's an important distinction to make as we read Scripture and as we walk through the this, this series because we want you personalizing these questions from Jesus. And quite frankly, that's what we want for you as you read God's Word. 
We should be doing our best when we're reading God's Word to slow down, get focused, and think through all that we're reading and processing so that we can take God's Word into our hearts in a way that is very personal and very real to our lives. This is a big deal, and it can impact our lives in such positive ways. But for that to happen, we have to slow down. We have to lean into these questions and engage them. And if we do, it can be life-changing. And if we don't, we can miss out on all that God's Word really has to offer us. There's a reason that Jesus asks so many questions, and He knows us so well, and He understands the best way for us to truly learn and grow is to personalize God's Word and these questions, and answering from them for ourselves is a great way to do that. But we got to challenge ourselves to answer them. If we do, it leads to our best lives possible. So this exercise is really important, and and answering these questions from Jesus really gives us a unique opportunity to grow and and, and become the people that God actually created us to be. So just quickly, I want to take you to last week, because I thought Ken did a great job with his Jesus question last week. His question was, if I'm telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? (laughs) That's a challenging question. If we acknowledge that what Jesus says is the truth, why do we fight him on stuff? It's interesting, right? But when we slow down and personalize that question, it can actually be very convicting, can it? And Ken pressed in on us on a great area, the concept of fear and worry in our lives. And he showed us that Jesus said we shouldn't worry about our lives, that our worry is actually useless and has no power. In fact, with all our worries, we can't add a single moment to our lives. It's just wasted energy. Instead, Jesus told us to let go of our worries and seek God first. We're to stop focusing on our worry. We're to start focusing on God. And I gotta say, that's easier said than done, right? But Ken said that if we struggle to believe in Jesus, it's time to settle into that exercise and answer that question for ourselves. If I'm telling you the truth, why don't you believe me? That is an, was an awesome talk last week. If you haven't seen it, go check that out on YouTube. Read it on our website, in the blog, in the sermon text. A great and challenging and convicting talk on the truth that Jesus speaks. Such a big moment in our lives if we take the time to personalize that question and answer it for ourselves. Now today, we get another really important question from Jesus. And, and I got to tell you, I was excited that I had the opportunity to talk on this one because it's a lot of fun in a lot of ways. And I, I mentioned earlier that Jesus asked, this question, asked his questions to a lot of different types of people in a lot of different circumstances. Sometimes it's to friends and people who love him and, and want to follow him. Sometimes it's to people in need of help or healing in their lives. Sometimes it's at dinner parties or traveling down the road and walking around with friends. And those are really nice times. But that's not where we find this question. See, this question, it comes from those more intense and confrontational moments with people who, want, who, who, who are so angry and frustrated with him, so upset with him, that they're looking for ways to kill him. So that, that's the kind of moment that we find our question in today. And, and I got to tell you, this one can help us so much with something I'm so passionate about that I really have to keep my emotions you know, kind of hemmed in as we're talking today because I want this to make sense to you. Because we're talking about how we can own God's word, how it can become part of our lives, but we have to answer our question to do that. So I want to give you the question on the front end. We're going to jump into a bunch of context around it. We're going to pick on these people that ask the question. Then we're going to go to some very personal parts for ourselves in it as we get into the exercise at the end of the talk. But I want to give you the question here on the front end, and here it is. Have you never read in the scriptures? It's a big question. We find this question twice in Matthew 21. And Matthew 21 is a big deal because it actually begins what we can call very safely the most intense moment and a week of Jesus' entire life and time on this earth. This actually kicks off with Palm Sunday. That's that amazing moment where Jesus is coming into Jerusalem and all the people are cheering. They're putting their cloaks down. They're putting palm branches down. They're they're screaming and cheering for him, screaming, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And it's those same people 
that in just a couple of days are going to be screaming, crucify him. That's where we are. This is Holy Week now. We're jumping into some real intense times, and that's where we find this question, and we find it a bunch as we walk through it. So Jesus enters the city of Jerusalem, and he has caused quite a stir. Like People are cheering. There's all kinds of stuff going on, and I just want to read a little of this scene here in Matthew uh, 21, starting in verse 12, because we get our first Uh, glimpse at the first time he pushes in on this question here in Matthew 21. Not the first time he asks it, first time in this chapter. So he comes into the city, everyone's cheering, and then this. Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it into a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children uh, um, shouting in the temple area, Hosanna, the son of David, they were indignant. Check this out. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. First question. First time we get it. Have you never read? From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. Okay, so let's stop and talk for a minute. Jesus comes into the city, and it's going crazy. So, of course, he's drawing a lot of attention here. He comes in with crowds cheering for him. He clears out the temple with a whip, and he meant business because everybody left. And once again, keeping tabs on all of this, holding his feet to the fire, checking out everything going on, or who I like to call the fun police here lately, the religious leaders and the teachers of the law. And they are not happy. And did you catch how scripture said that with all the good and wonderful things he did? They're not happy hearing the children shouting and cheering Hosanna in the temple for him. And they ask Jesus about it. And he asks this question, have you never read? See, then he quotes a psalm. And this is interesting because it's a psalm that he knows with 100% certainty that they have read. So this leads to a couple of parables that Jesus tells right after this. I think it's it's kind of interesting, um, but... I'm sorry, like I I lost my body. (laughs) Later, the fun police confront him in the temple. And once again, this time they're questioning him about his authority in the teaching. What's he teaching? Where where did his authority come from? You know, what are these miracles he's doing and healing people? Under what authority does this come from? And he's questioning that. And that leads Jesus to tell two parables. Now, the two parables, the first one's about a father and his two sons. The second about a, a man who owns a vineyard and rents it to the farmers. And, and, you know, and he turn, the, basically the farmers turn on him and his family. And, and what's funny is it takes them a little bit, but they finally realize he's talking about them and they're not real happy about it. But then we get the question again. Uh, Matthew 21, 42 to 44. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures? The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to the people who will produce its fruit. He, he who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, but he whom it falls will be crushed. So two times in Matthew 21, we get our question. Jesus asked the question, have you never read the scriptures? Then quotes a psalm both times, and he knows with 100% certainty that they would have read the psalms that he's quoting. He knows they know them. In fact, every time you see Jesus bring up this idea of questioning whether someone reads scripture, it's always to those who he knows have read it. And I think that's very important for us to see. Jesus doesn't ask someone who's trying to figure out their faith, have you never read your Bible? He doesn't do that. No, he asked that of those he knows for a fact, read their scriptures and would know and could recite the scriptures that he's pointing to. Twice here in Matthew 21, he says, have you never read? Then points to a psalm that he knows they did. And we need to think about that. Jesus is asking a group of powerful and well-educated religious leaders if they've ever read a particular passage from the scriptures that he knows they had. He knows the pride they have in the work they've done. He knows how devoutly they have studied the scripture. He knows how much it means to them that they know their scriptures. But he asked the question to show them that they've really missed the point of what they're reading and what they're studying. That's not the only example we have of this. 
This question comes up a lot in Scripture. There's a great example of this in Matthew 12, where Jesus and the disciples are walking along on the Sabbath day, and the same religious leaders, the, these guys come up, and they're not happy because he see, they see his disciples as violating the rules of Sabbath. They try to check Jesus on us, and we get this question again. Matthew 12, this is verses 1 through 8. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick some heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath. He answered, Haven't you read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and he and his companions ate at the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for, lawful for them to do, but only for the priests to do. Or haven't you read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple desecrate the day and yet are innocent? I tell you that no one is greater than, greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent, for the Son of a Man is Lord of the Sabbath. You see it. Have you never read? Or haven't you read in the law? He knows they have. He knows they would know the scriptures he's pointing to. The problem is they're missing it. They're missing the point. It's not becoming part of their lives. So just one more to pick at them before we stop picking at them and start to personalize this a little bit. And this one's found in Matthew 22. Um, I think this one's a lot of fun. They're trying to test him again. This time they're questioning about the marriage and divorce. And Jesus replies this way to them, Matthew 22, 29. Jesus replied, you are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. Now that would not be easy for them to receive because they can quote the scriptures, right? So that they know the same scriptures that Jesus says they don't know. And they would say, we know the scriptures and we know the power of God. Jesus asked this question to people who read the Bible and are very proud of how much they know about scripture. But Jesus is exposing a problem. He does it with them over and over again, and it drives them nuts. They know their Bible. The issue is there's a gap between the knowledge they've gained, what they believe, and how they live. So, so what if you know your Bible if it's not reflected in your life, right? You almost do more damage than good there. This is why Jesus keeps asking them, have you never read while knowing that they have? So let's face it. Having knowledge is great, but it's, if it's just facts and knowledge in your mind and not applied to your life, it's not useful. It's not leading you anywhere. It's not worth a whole lot, is it? You might win some games of Trivial Pursuit, and you'll probably make some people look, re you know, you'll look really intelligent to others. But what good is that? Jesus quite literally is exposing this problem. And I got to tell you, in Matthew 23, so remember we're in 21, we've read a piece of 22, 23, so we're right in that week, all these confrontations, he actually just makes it so clear what the issue is. He exposes this gap. The problem is he does it very publicly. Matthew 23, love this in the message version, just two verses here. Jesus says the religion scholars and the Pharisees are competent teachers in God's law. You won't go wrong in following their teachings on Moses, but be careful about following them. They talk a good line, but they don't live it. They, they don't take it into their hearts and live it out in their behavior. You know, we pick on these religious leaders a lot, but I kept thinking this had to be so difficult and frustrating with them, for them, because these are the godly people of that time. These are the people that have committed their lives to knowing the scriptures better than everyone. They, I'm sure they're proud of the work they've done, the good they've done, how much they've studied, how closely they follow religious rules. And I'm sure everybody showed them respect and looked up to them. I'm sure they were treated with the greatest respect. But Jesus shows up <laughs> and just keeps exposing issues of their hearts. And worse, he does it publicly. Not only does he expose their heart issues that, that, that they keep, like to keep hidden, but he keeps pointing to all they know and asking them what good is it if they aren't going to live it out. So I want you to think about the world that they live in. They're the elite of the elite, the best of the best. They have the best jobs, the best education. They're the leaders who have dedicated their lives to the things that Jesus keeps questioning if they know anything about. That would be really challenging to hear. 
And well, you know they didn't receive it really well, and they never really do accept Jesus. They end up killing him a few days later, and I like to remind everybody murder's bad, but that happened. So that's the backdrop of our question of the day. Jesus asking the godly, the elite, those who know the scriptures well, have you never read the scriptures? His point is that if you had read it, wouldn't you live differently? Wouldn't it be seen, felt, and heard in your lives? Wouldn't it be reflected in your thinking, your choices, and how you view and treat people? Well, it gives us a lot to talk about today. These men knew the scriptures, but Jesus keeps exposing them. What's he pointing out? He's pointing out artificial intelligence of the finest kind. They know the scriptures, but they don't know the scriptures. They know the scriptures, but they don't grasp them in, in, in their hearts. They know the scriptures, but they don't know, they don't know how to live out the scriptures. Their lives contradict everything they know in the scriptures. They know the scriptures, but only in a way that fits their agenda and their own beliefs. They're not reading with an open heart and mind. They seem to be reading in a way to validate what they already believe is true. It's closed in their minds to whatever God is trying to lead them towards. I think Jesus does a great job of explaining this in John 5, that that they weren't allowing the scriptures to guide them. They were using the scriptures to validate their own beliefs and their own agendas. It's like, I'm not going to get too crazy here with this, but it would be like, you know, going onto the television and only watching the news networks and finding the things that already fit your thinking, right? And then saying, see, that's truth. Well, what you're doing is not necessarily being open (laughs) to what may actually be going on. So if we're only gaining information that fits what we want things to be, that's a closed-minded way of looking at things. And that's what they're doing with Scripture. It will close them off to God's will. And I have to say, to me, the best way to say that would be they're using God's Word rather than allowing God's Word to use them. I think that's the best way I could phrase that for you today. And you know what? People are still doing that today. Let's read John 5, uh, 37. I think I'll stop around verse 42, 43. Jesus said, The Father who sent me confirmed me, and you missed it. You never heard his voice. You never saw his appearance. There is nothing left in your memory of his message because you do not take his message seriously. Listen to verse 39. You have your heads in your Bibles constantly because you think you'll find eternal life there. But you miss the forest for the trees. These scriptures are all about me. And here I am standing right before you. And you aren't willing to receive from me the life you say you want. I'm not interested in crowd approval. And you know why? Because I know you and I know your crowds. I know that love, especially God's love, is not on your working agenda. This is big. Jesus is saying, hey, you guys are paid to identify me. I'm standing right in front of you. Everything you know about Scripture points to me and you're missing me. I got to tell you, that's amazing to me because these men were paid to identify him. It's their whole training, right? And they can't see him because they're so close-minded. They have their own agendas and they can't see that God's word is pointing to Jesus. All of it does. They, they had their own beliefs and they're so caught up in their knowledge that they, they, they just couldn't see what was happening right in front of them. They're using God's word rather than having God's word use them. All right. We've picked on those guys enough for the day, right? We'll get back to it, I'm sure, at another time. I seem to do it often. But we've picked on the religious leaders enough, and and it's time to begin this exercise of personalizing the question. And this question is really to those of you who are Christians, those of you who are, are following Jesus. And I want you to picture it now. It's just you and Jesus You're in a simple conversation, you're you're talking with him, and maybe he just wants to know about your life, and you start talking about your life and describing your life to him, but along the way, you may start to say some things that don't necessarily line up with the scriptures. And he looks you right in the eyes, and he asks the question, have you never read in the scriptures? How do you answer that? I got to tell you, and I think we need to start here, For some of us, we need to take this question very literally. Because for some of us, the answer to that might be no. 
And frankly, that might be more of us than we'd really want to say here in a church setting, but I think it needs to be talked about. I recently found this survey from Reasoning of Scripture, uh, of Scripture Ministries, and they conducted this survey that really stood out to me. And what they found was that 35% of Christians admit that they do not read their Bibles. 50% of them, of the Christians that do read their Bibles, say they do read it every day. And 30, 37% of the people who say they read their Bibles, they would say they only read it once a week, and they basically say they would read it at church. And the number one reason that people are saying they don't read their Bible, they're too busy. It's kind of alarming when you start thinking about those numbers and what they mean. And I think it's interesting because, again, these are Christians talking here. These are Christians who would know what the scriptures say about God's word. These are Christians who would read that that God's word is a lamp to our feet and a guide to our paths. These are Christians who would know that God's word is how we arm ourselves against the enemy's lies. But in general, Christians today have very little interest in engaging God's word. So for some of us, when the question is asked, have you never read the, the, the scriptures, the answer to that might be no. And, and if that's you today, you know, I would really encourage you to download the YouVersion Bible app, to get a Bible out today, and really start engaging the scriptures. And we'll talk about how to do that at the end of the talk. But my, for me today, more than those that would say, I, I don't read it at all, my heart really turned to those of us who read our Bibles and know what it says, yet struggle to see Scripture reflected in our lives. We struggle to apply it or to live it out. And we might not struggle with the things the religious leaders did, and we probably don't, right? The the prideful things, the ranks, the titles, all that stuff that they dealt with. But we can struggle to allow Scripture to to penetrate our hearts and minds as well. It's tough at times to see it be applied to our lives. So Jesus asked this question of all of us who walk through life, And we struggle to allow God's word to be seen, felt, and heard in our lives. And it's an important question. It's a great exercise for us today. For those of us who know a lot of scripture, but whose life might not exactly line up with the scriptures that we know. Now, I got to tell you something. I want you to hear this. I've been around church my whole life, and I know that person well. And at times, I can be that person too. And so can you. We can read our Bibles and we can still violate or contradict so much of what it says. And sometimes it might just be rebellion and pure, pure pride and hard-heartedness and stubbornness. But I think more often than not, that's not what it is. It's just how hard life hits us all the time. It's those painful moments that hit us in life. It's the adversity and the chaos of our lives. It's the busyness. It's our enemy slamming against us. It's all the pain we feel from people in this cruel world. And it all pushes in on us in such a way that it's hard at times to just think clearly, to, to sit down and process. Our emotions get out ahead of our thoughts and things happen, right? It's not always like this, just this rebellious, hard-hearted, prideful thing. Sometimes it's hard to retain God's word. Sometimes it's hard to allow it all the way into our lives. And we walk through life so dazed and confused and in such a just busy, cluttered state that we're unable to process what God may be saying through it. It just doesn't make it all the way into our hearts. And that's why we need to really slow down and try to focus and hopefully stay humble and allow the Holy Spirit, God, in us to to guide our lives and to bring the word of God to life in us so that, we can, so that we're not those people walking through life very proud of our artificial intelligence. You know, those with, there's a lot of people out there that have a lot of knowledge about God, but their lives contradict the scriptures that they could quote to you and may even share with you. And how's that go? When they share scripture with you, it doesn't really line up with their own lives. But when we personalize this question from Jesus, It can be so helpful and it can get us to this place where we're aligning with God's word. So so to those of you who have asked Christ into your heart, you're a Christian watching this at home today, those who read God's word, we we, got to talk about it. And I know it's not something we like to bring up in, 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 in front of people, specifically not in church settings, but we Christians can struggle to allow our lives to line up with God's word too, can't we? I know, we don't want to say it out loud, but I think we all have areas of our lives 
where we tend to struggle with living out God's word and things that we need to work on. And it may not be this artificial intelligence thing of the religious leaders or the pride of the religious titles and agendas that they had, and hopefully it's not, but more often than not, it's just the painful circumstances and wounds and junk that we walk through in life that we just miss the important words found in Scripture. Or we don't believe them to be true, or we just simply struggle to retain them for one reason or another. So to close today, what I wanted to do is get very personal in this exercise. And I want you to take this moment and make it as personal as you possibly can. It's just you and Jesus. The two of you are in a conversation. He's asking you about your life. You start describing your life to Jesus. And I want you to think about this. Slow down here and just think. When you start describing your life to Jesus, what would you say or what would you believe about yourself? Or what do you walk in and think about in your heart that would lead Jesus to ask you the question, have you never read the scriptures? What is it? I'm just going to walk through a couple of examples of this. Now, I was very tempted to just keep doing this, like, but I know a two-hour sermon probably isn't the way to go. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to use scripture that most of us have read often have probably sent to friends, posted on social media, have on a poster, maybe on a bumper sticker. And I wanted to use those scriptures intentionally, not because we've heard them before, but because we've heard them before and our lives may not line up with these things. So I want you to just think about this. What is it for you? I want you to get honest. You know the scriptures. What is it that Jesus would ask, have you never read in the scriptures? So I want to start here. Do you struggle with fear? Jesus would ask, have you never read? John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Do you struggle with anxiety and you just wear it? You wear your stress. You don't know what to do with your stress. You don't know how to offload your stress. You're walking through life. You're you're tight. You're stressed out. You're physically ill from all that you deal with. Maybe even dump that stress on in all the wrong places because you just don't know what to do with it. Well, I think Jesus would ask, have you never read? Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Do you struggle to believe that? Uh, do you struggle with your value and your self-worth? Just can't stand the person you see in the mirror each day. Just feel like a loser. Well, Jesus would ask, have you never read Ephesians 2.10? For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Do you struggle to believe that your sins are actually forgiven? Might work for other people. I'm sure he forgives other people. My sin, not my sin. My sins are so bad that I've struggled so much. I've messed up so badly. Well, Jesus would ask you, have you never read Romans 3, 23 and 24? For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard, yet God with undeserved kindness declares that we are righteousness. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. Do you look at who you are and think, there's no way God would love me. He might love Ken. You know, Ken seems to pray a lot and do some good God stuff, but he would never love somebody like me. What Jesus would ask, have you never read Romans 5, 8? But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I'll tell you one I can still struggle with to this day at times and you struggle with loneliness, just feeling like there's nobody out there at times, feeling like you're all alone. But Jesus would look at you and ask, have you never read Joshua 1, 9? Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified, do not be discouraged, for the Lord God will be with you wherever you go. I could do this all day and give you different examples of things that so many of us wrestle with, so many of us believe that contradict the scriptures that we know, even knowing that we are living and thinking or believing the opposite of what scripture is. So I want you thinking this through today. What is it for you? What do you believe about yourself or do that Jesus would look at you and lovingly ask this question? Have you never read in the scriptures? 
See, if, 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 the first answer you might have is no. And if that's you, and I'm serious here, I'm not trying to be punchy with you, but I would really encourage you to engage God's word today. If you don't know how to do that, you need to email Ken or I. You need to let us know. We'll, we'll get you in touch with a Bible. We'll give you one immediately. We'll get you started on how you can start reading God's word today. But if the answer is yes, I have read it, and my life just doesn't align with the scriptures I read, there are some really important things to consider. The first thing I think you need to do is ask yourself, how do I read my Bible? Do, do I have an open heart and an open mind? Am I humbly reading God's word to, and open to learning and growing? Do I want to be led to live a new way through God's word? Or do I have more of a closed mindset where I either have no interest in learning or allowing God's word to lead my life? Like, am I trying to use God's word for what I want rather than allowing God's word to use me? Do you use God's word to validate what you already believe? Or are you allowing it to shape and mold, and I added this on purpose, and challenge you to live differently. I want you to think about how you approach the Bible. It is so important to be open to God's word and to allow it to truly penetrate your heart and mind because it is our guide and it can lead us to our best lives possible. So as we close today, I want you really thinking about your life. Think of of the challenges you, you face in life. Think about all the things that you wrestle with that may contradict the the scriptures that you know. And think about the things that may lead Jesus to ask you this question. Have you never read the scriptures? If the answer is, Jesus, I have read it, and I know it, then the follow-up is, why aren't you living it out? See, when you live it out, that's when things get fun. That's when you truly start walking into the life that God designed for you all along. Because it's one thing to read the scriptures and know what they say. It is a whole other thing to read the scriptures, know what they say, and live them out. We don't live them out. If we don't live out what we know, it's just that artificial intelligence that we really don't want to see in our lives. We love you so much, and we'll see you again next week.